Currently, I can ballet one tippy toe down. That's about it. Like a full ballet toe point cramping uh, calf muscle uh, on one foot with the bike leaning. What I'm talking about is having some fun learning more about your bike, saving a couple hundred bucks, and a good bit of both feet on the ground. Scared. We are living, I guess, best way to put it. Make it some getaway. A wee bit more grip. So quite well. All right, so just got to remove all these staples. Thinking what would be the smartest thing to do. All right, so what we've done is we've drawn out these symmetrical lines. I determined where this contour would be by using my little stick pin to determine where the seat depth is draw one line in the middle then do one contour on one side once I have one drawn and I'm satisfied with the contour that it seems natural I can then go from my center line measure to here and then measure to there to know that that's where to match this contour I would go to that measurement mark. So, and I just did that all the way down. And at length, what you end up with is a fairly symmetrical, uniform, contoured area that you'll be taking out. And the idea for this is, based on the seat concepts, is, and, and again, this is not going to be a seat concept. It's never going to be as nice. I'm not saying that the foam is, is good. I'm not saying, you know, everything about the seat concept seat is better. What I'm talking about is savings a couple hundred bucks and uh, having some fun learning more about your bike, and that's what I love to do. So it's not always about the money. A lot of times it's about just wanting to be more intimate with the bike because even things I learn here will help uh, when something goes wrong in the field. Just something you learn, even if it's just how to treat foam or <laughs> how to draw the contour to know how to best amputate your leg if you're stuck under a rock. <laughs> Kidding. Again, I determined where this contour would be by using my little stick pin to determine where the seat depth is. And then I will continue to use this. I'll take a little product out, check it, take a little product out, check it, until I at length get as close to the seat concepts as possible, which is after this swoop, going somewhat flat all throughout this area to the back. So it will be slightly lower than the seat concept seat, which is kind of the whole idea of this. Uh, for me, I'm a very short guy, so with the Cuba Link and this seat mod uh, and lowering the front forks to match the Cuba Link spec, I should be in business, especially when the bike has a load. I may even get uh, a good bit of both feet on the ground, so we'll see. Currently, when it's just factory, uh, no luggage at full adjustment, I can ballet one tippy toe down. <laughs> That's about it. Like a full ballet toe point cramping. Uh, calf muscle uh, on one foot with the bike leaning. This is a highly mandatory mod for me. The tools that you would use 
to remove this material, this uh, memory foam, is not what you would think. We try, we've tried several different types of foam, several different seeds, and we found that a grinder, a grinder wheel works good for this, and a, just a heavy composite mesh wheel that really grinds it down, belt sander works. Uh, what does not work is any sort of cutting. I don't know what type of blade you'd have to have. Uh, heat knife doesn't work. Definitely do not use heat with memory foam. Found out the hard way. It becomes permanently gummy, permanently sticky. Uh, no bueno. High RPMs help keep it from getting jumpy. And you just have to be smooth and not stop in one spot and cre it creates gouges. Just round it out by the front. Yeah, looks good. Got the crude shaping out of the way. The bulk. We will see here what this looking like. In this process, learned that the uh, a drywall screen on one of these boards like this, it really does a great job in uh, flattening out the ridges. It just kind of floats over the top and only removes material at those areas that are high. Pretty smooth, pretty awesome. I'm down to that screen I had. The drywall screen was a uh, fine. Fine, and then now I am on a fine uh, wet sand paper, cloth paper. So it's wet sandable. It's not. I'm not wet sanding it. Um, I'm gonna go over it with one more grit. You know, a few little damages here, foam chunked out here and there. But overall, it really turned out good. Definitely serves my purpose. Uh, well, it's exactly what I was needing to get done. So, yeah, Bubba. So that is the final product. We were going to use a heat gun. Like I said, apparently it kind of seals the, seals it back, but I don't know how necessary that is and we can't find the, the, the gun. Uh, so <laughs> we have, I, Put some waterproofing agent like kind of impregnated with that so it should be fine should be good plus the seats you know waterproof itself it's just you know never a bad idea but that's it there are some imperfections but you can see pretty much the flow is smooth um could be done a little better i'm not great at this i'm not great at shaping some people could probably do that a lot better uh, there are some imperfections here and there but overall it is going to work wonderfully Next step is to reapply the cover. We tried a regular staple gun, heavy duty staple gun. The problem is, is the plastic has a lot of recoil in it. So it, the, the moment you press the, buh, 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 the trigger of the staple gun, the staple just, it hits the plastic and that little bit of resistance causes it to lose its inertia and it bends. It was a pain in the butt last time we did it. We are gonna use this pneumatic stapler Crown stabler and just pray that it doesn't shoot right through. So first thing we do is you can kind of look at the existing cover and you'll be able to see the lines from the existing seat. So make sure you get it on front is front, back is back. When you place it on here, it pretty much drape over. What you'll want to do, and I'm not going to have the, the camera running the whole time. You want to get the, the end, the front and the two sides and make sure that you pull all your slack out of here then go around and sew it up with the with the uh staples making sure all the slack's taken up but be sure to get these four points first otherwise it'll bunch uh it won't bunch properly when you go to to sew it up obviously you want to be cautious as to where you put your staples you know um 
they don't really go in the same spot depending on how much foam you took off you the cover spans a lot less space a lot less padding so obviously it comes over more so you just have to be, have to determine where you're going to put your staples and i chose along that seam hopefully that works good we shall see almost there so that is that got it all stapled on there looks much better than our first hack job i don't know if i mentioned that in this video or not but we really butchered the really butchered it the first time around hope you enjoyed that mod um, seat concepts bypass we'll call it <laughs>